Okay, welcome to episode two of Cub Scout TV. Thanks for joining us. And thanks very much for everyone who tuned in last week. Um, there was lots of correspondence. Um, I'd like to shout out to uh, Ben for sending me a great email afterwards, um, telling me how much he enjoyed the show. Thanks, Ben. I hope you're watching tonight and I'm sure you'll enjoy tonight's uh, program. Um, tonight is an Anzac Day theme. Um, we had Anzac Day on Saturday, just gone, and we're gonna be making some Anzac biscuits. Uh, there'll be an Anzac quiz, and we're going to play a couple of games. So um, hopefully everyone's ready, ready to make some noise, everybody. Okay, so remember, I'm gonna call Pack, Pack, Pack. You can scream out Pack. Um, when I lower my hands, go down to the crouch, and I'll say, um, you know, and, and do all the, the bits and pieces. We're not going to um, lower the flag tonight because I forgot last week, so it's already lowered, so we can still salute the flag um, later on. So, ready? Pack, pack, pack! Do your best. Alright, I hope you made lots of noise there, guys. Excellent. Alright, so, everyone standing up. Uh, uh, pack alert. Pack face the flag. Pack salute the flag. Okay, excellent. Great. Alright, so, um, we're just going to play a little game just to get up and moving and get some energy out. Um, being Anzac Day, uh, we're used to sort of a few you know, orders being done. So uh, we're going to play Bagheera Says. It's just like Simon Says, except it's Bagheera Says. So if I say Bagheera Says, I want you to do whatever I say. If I don't say Bagheera Says, then don't do it. And just, you know, you'll know if you've done the wrong thing. And I'm just going to try and trick you. So uh, let's go. All right, sit down. Oh, I hope no one was sitting down. Alrighty, okay, Bagheera says, hop on one foot. Bagheera says, walk in a circle. Stop. Simon says, clap your hands. Oh, I said Simon says, not Bagheera says. Okay, uh, Bagheera says, uh, clap your hands. Bagheera says, stop. Bagheera says, sit down. Bagheera says, stand up. Sit down. Bagheera says, sit down. Bagheera says, stand up. Okay, hop on your right foot. Bagheera says, hop on your right foot. Okay, so how did we go with that one, guys? We ready to do some more? Excellent, okay. <clears throat> Bagheera says, uh, rub your tummy. Bagheera says, rub your tummy and pat your head. Bagheera says, stop. Bagheera says, sit down. Stand up. Stand up. Bagheera says, stand up. Okay, excellent. Well done, guys. Hopefully that was a, a bit of fun. Okay, so now, as I said last week, we had lots of people um, sending in uh, big bits and pieces after the game, so um, after the show. So we, um, we remember we, we dyed some eggs. So I've just got some photos of uh, that people have sent through. So the first one here uh, are photos from I think that Tyler had sent in. Um, and then uh, there's Isabel with uh, her lovely red egg. Doing well there, Isabel. Uh, and then we've got, um, I think we've got there, that's Tyler again with um, his little brother and the eggs that he did. And then we should have some photos of, oh, I think we missed the photos. We had some photos from Ella and Lucas. We'll make sure that we'll get those up onto the, uh, onto the website so everyone can have a look. But thanks, keep sending in, keep sending in photos like that um, so we can, we can share that each week. Um, one of the other things we're going to do is spot the difference each week. So if you were watching last week, um, hopefully you've paid a bit of attention. You may have noticed that I, there was something different about my shirt. I have sewn uh, something onto my shirt um, and in other weeks it might be that I'm wearing something different. But uh, just you know, think back to what I was wearing last week and, and what my shirt might have looked like last week and see if you can spot a difference. And as I said, each week we're going to be doing, uh, going to be doing something else. Alrighty, now it smells great in here because we've been making uh, Anzac biscuits in preparation, but I'm going to show you now how to make Anzac biscuits. So let's head across to the sink. So first of all, obviously, we need to wash our hands. Uh, first part of a, a nice, healthy, hygienic area. And, and because of um, all the, the COVID-19 restrictions, everybody knows that we need to thoroughly wash our hands for, for 20 seconds. So um, lots of Lots of hand washing and, and soaping going on. 20 seconds is always a long time. So whilst you're doing and washing your hands, you you know you can sing happy birthday a couple of times. Um, you can say the, the scout promise and, and law a couple of times. But make sure that you've got nice, 
clean hands before you do anything in the kitchen. So, as I said, tonight we're going to be showing you how to make Anzac biscuits. The recipe is already up on the scoutstv.com.au website, so you can download that and have a look at that after the show and um, over the weekend with the help of your parents um, you can make some uh, Anzac biscuits and of course make sure that you send in uh, any pictures of before, during and after if there are any left. Um, Alright, so the ingredients that you're going to need, now I've, I've halved the ingredients here just to make it easier for me, but you'll need um, one and a quarter cups of plain flour, a cup of, oop, a cup of rolled oats, half a cup of uh, sugar, uh, three quarters of a cup of desiccated coconut, so that's fine, fine coconut. Uh, you'll get um, 150 grams of unsalted butter chopped. I've already melted my butter, so that's why that one's not chopped up. Um, you'll need um, some golden syrup, you'll need some bicarb soda and some boiling water, so I'll just throw the kettle on. Um, so the first thing that we do is we grab all of the dry ingredients and we put them into the bowl. So in goes the the flour, the desiccated coconut, you can hear the kettle boiling away in the background, the sugar, <coughs> and the rolled oats. So we just get a wooden spoon, wooden spoon, and just mix all those until they're nicely mixed together. Now, as I said, I've got, I'm just going to put a little bit of heat on here and just melt melt my my butter and my golden syrup together. This is really, really sticky, so you need a bit of help with um, from mum or dad to uh, get that. So we've mixed all of our dry ingredients together and um, and we're melting our, melting our butter and our golden syrup together. Give that a bit of a stir with a, with a spoon. Uh, oh. Then what we need to do is we need to get a teaspoon of bicarb soda sorry, half a teaspoon of, of bicarb soda. Just put it into a, into a bowl. And we need one and a half tablespoons of boiling water. <clears throat> so because I was halving it, that should be enough. Just mix the boiling water and the bicarb in together and then you pour that in <clears throat> Pour that into your. Oh, better turn that off. It into your uh, golden syrup and, and melted butter, and it will all froth up. And then you simply combine combine that into the dry mixture. and then just stir it together. So it's a pretty simple recipe, very quick and easy to make. Now whilst uh, you do need to have uh, the oven preheated to 170 degrees, so it's quite a, a coolish oven, and then you, um, you cook them for 12 minutes. I've got a tray, tray here. And so once it's combined, you just need to uh, Roll them together. So while I'm going to, while I'm rolling these to get them ready to put into the oven, I uh, the next thing that we are going to do is a uh, an Anzac Day quiz. So um, I'm sure with Anzac Day, just just having gone, you'll you'll know a lot about Anzac Day. But uh, I'm just going to tell you a few facts about Anzac Day that you may or may not know, and um, if you've got if you don't have a pen and paper, just call out or go and grab one now because uh, I'm going to ask you a few quiz questions. I just want you to write down the, the number of the question and the answer to the question and we can go through the, uh, the answers at the end. So, um, Anzac Day is the 25th of April and it's one of Australia's most important uh, national occasions. It marks the anniversary of the first major military action fought by the Australian and New Zealand forces during the First World War. And the First World War started on the 4th of August 
1914. Now, the first Anzacs, they landed at Gallipoli at 4.28 a.m. in the morning on Sunday the 25th of April in 1915. And that campaign at Gallipoli lasted until the 20th of December 1915, so quite a lot of the year. And the soldiers landed in the dark, they were under fire, and they were always under heavy fire from the enemy. And they had to um, climb these cliffs that were covered in prickly oak scrub, and the progress was extremely difficult. And <clears throat> one of the people that was there during that campaign was actually my grandfather, Augustus Oates, and uh, he, he uh, went on and fought after Gallipoli at the Somme, and, and he was lucky enough to survive both and, and come back, back, back home. And a few years ago, um, I travelled to Turkey um, to go to the dawn service in, uh, at Anzac Cove in, um, at Gallipoli um, to sort of work out, you know, see it for my, myself that the conditions that they had to deal with and to, to honour the work and the, the efforts that all of the Anzacs had put in. So, hopefully you've got a pen and paper by now. Almost finished with these, uh, with holding these up, don't worry about them too much. <clears throat> Get a little sticky uh, mixture on your hands, that's fine. And as I said, we <clears throat> We just put those into the uh, put those into the oven for um, for 12 minutes. So. And here's some that I have prepared earlier, as I said. And so once they've cooked for 12 minutes, they should be a little bit golden and absolutely delicious. Okay, so if you've got your pen and paper, the first questions that I'd like you to, uh, to answer is what day is Anzac Day? Okay, question number two, what does Anzac stand for? And it's A-N-Z-A-C. Question number three, which war was Anzac Day from? Okay, question four, in what year did the war commence? Question five, in what country is Gallipoli? Alrighty, so I've got some more questions, but before the questions, so there are some special flowers that, uh, and plants that we wear for, remem for remembrance. So um, it's tradition on Anzac Day to wear a sprig of rosemary on your lapel. Um, and rosemary has a particular significance for Australians on Anzac Day because it grows wild on the Gallipoli Peninsula. Single poppies, you've, you've probably all seen single poppies. And the poppies, uh, a single poppy is worn on, um, on Remembrance Day. Now that's the 11th of November. So the end of the World War I was 11 a.m. on the 11th of November, November 1918. And that's when you'll see a single poppy um, worn for remembrance. But wreaths of poppies are traditionally placed at memorials and honour boards on Anzac Day. So you will see the poppies as well um, on Anzac Day. Uh, flags will be flown at half mast on Anzac Day as a sign of mourning, um, and then on Anzac Day itself, you probably know this, um, but usually there are the national remembrance takes two forms. So there'll be commemorative dawn services held across the country, and um, which is the time the, of the original landing, uh, and then later in the day, usually there are a lot of marches that happen, and they cover not just the First World War, but People will march from uh, any um, any war that uh, will Australian and New Zealand um, armed forces have, have served in. 
Um, now I have to get my other piece of paper. Now the other thing, and I think this is quite a cool little uh, fact that's um, for scouting, is that um, the Anzacs also wore colour patches on their uniform. And um, if you've been or you've heard about Cabaret or any of the other big um, camps that uh, scouts do, you'll understand why they wore colour patches because the Anzacs were grouped together in battalions of nearly 1,000 men. And when they went, they did their training in Egypt. And you can imagine that you've got battalions of 1,000 people and they need to get back at night to their tents and all the tents look the same. How do you find your tent? And so they designed flags and flew those above their tents and they wore patches on their uniform so that they knew how to get back and find their tents. So it was pretty ingenious. Really, and, and we'll do the same thing when we go to a cabaret or a um, camp, is that we'll have the same sort of setup so that you can find your way back to your tent. Um, okay, so got three more questions. So question number six, <clears throat> what plants and flowers are often used during Anzac Day commemorations? Question number seven, what two important activities take place on Anzac Day. And the last question I have, question eight, is where did the Anzacs train before the war? Okay. All right, so hopefully you've got answers to them. I'm just gonna go through the answers now. So question one was when is Anzac Day? The it's the 25th of April, I'm sure you all got that correct. What does ANZAC stand for? So it's Australian and New Zealand Army Corps, which is C-O-R-P-S. Question three was, which war was ANZAC Day uh, from? And it was from the First World War. Question four was, what year did the war commence? That was 1914. In what country is Gallipoli? So that's in Turkey. Uh, question six was what plants and flowers are often used during Anzac Day commemorations? So that's the rosemary and the poppies. Question seven, what two important activities take place on Anzac Day? So that was the dawn service and marches. And the last question eight was where did the Anzacs train before the war? And that was Egypt. Excellent. <clears throat> um, okay, so the hopefully you've all got a piece of paper. Again, if you don't have a piece of paper, you need a piece of paper and a uh, pen, text or marker, some sort of thing to draw on it. So for this activity, what I'm going to do is get you to, um, I'm going to give you instructions and I want you to follow those instructions that I give you to draw what I'm expecting you to draw. So hopefully you've all got a piece of paper and a pen and somewhere to, to, to draw onto this piece of paper. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is turn the paper so it's landscape, not portrait, landscape. Then I'd like you to draw a circle approximately the same size as a 50 cent piece right in the middle of your page. Okay, so now I'd like you to draw a line that goes, a, a, rectangle, a rectangle that goes all the way around the page, about two centimeters in from the edge of the page. So I'll give you a little bit of time to do that. So about two centimeters in, um, and all the way around a rectangle. Okay, so now you should have a rectangle with a circle in the middle of it. And this one can be a little bit tricky. I want you to draw a line through the middle, a horizontal line, that is, a horizontal line through the middle of the page, through the middle of your rectangle, but not through the circle that you've drawn in the middle. So when you're drawing your line, draw it towards the circle and stop when you hit the circle. Don't draw it through the circle and then when you get to the other side of the circle, keep drawing it all the way to the other side of the rectangle. So 
you don't have the ability to ask questions, hopefully you were able to do that. And this is what I was hoping you've drawn. So there is a circle in the middle, a rectangle all the way around, which is about two centimeters in from the side. And this horizontal line goes all the way. It doesn't go through the circle. It stops and starts again. Now, does anyone know what you've drawn? You've drawn the Aboriginal flag. And did you know that there were approximately a thousand Aboriginals that signed up and served in the First World War? Now, these Aboriginals, they weren't even allowed to vote and recognised really as Australian citizens. And they weren't allowed to actually fight in the war, but like a lot of people in the war, they were really dedicated to the cause and they signed up and were allowed through and, and did an amazing job on the battlefields. Now what I'd like you to do after this is just a little bit of research. Just, you might already know what the colours are on the, uh, on the Aboriginal flag, but what I'd like you to do is colour in the Aboriginal flag and tell me what the three colours of the Aboriginal flag represent and take a photo of it and just email, get your mum and dad to email that in. And the details on how to contact us are all on scoutstv.com.au. Um, alrighty, now, hopefully people were able to put together a scouts box and in the scout box, um, I'm hoping that everyone's got a piece of rope. Um, if you don't have a piece of rope at home, there are other things that you can certainly um, you can certainly be using. Just a piece of string will work if, if that's all you've got. If you've got a dressing gown, the cord and the dressing gown works. Grab one of your dad's ties. He's not going to be using them in the next couple of months. Um, just don't wreck it too much. Um, but just quickly, get your rope out. Um, and you know, just going to practice over the next few weeks. We'll, we'll start doing doing more of these. Um, but I'm just going to remind people: it's been a while since you've been at uh, at the scout hall. Um, I'm sure, and we're just going to tie our very favourite basic knot, which is the reef knot. And um, just it's good to to um, just have a bit of rope at home and practice these knots all the time, so you just remember them. And so, just very quickly, we're going to go right over left and under, and left, over right, and under. And it's good to just repeat those words in your head so that all of the time you'll always get a reef knot and not a granny knot. So I just wanted to show you one very basic knot tonight. Um, but what I want you to do is to ensure that you've got a bit of rope or something similar in your scout box for next week, so we can do a few more knots. Um, and just while I'm talking about it, next week, we're going to be doing a Mother's Day um, special. It's Mother's Day in two weekends time. And so we'll be making some, some um, we'll do some craft, make something special for mum, um, but have some, we'll need some string and some other bits of papers for that. Um, but just uh, grab, grab some, uh, some rope for your scout box. Okay, so, um, what uh, I'm going to show you now, one of, um, one of my friends, Cindy, has sent in some photos of her, her camp blanket when she was at Guide. So thanks, Cindy. And hopefully Cindy's niece is watching. So hello to you. Um, so we've got, this is a, a photo of, um, of Cindy's blanket. And then um, we've got some photos of the, um, the badges, some of the, the cool looking badges that, uh, that Cindy sewed onto her um, onto her camp blanket. Um, and this camp blanket is probably almost 30 years old or maybe older. Um, but yeah, so that, and, and that's a, that's a guides, um, a guides one, but, um, in the same sense, we've still got, um, you know, our, our, um, our camp blankets and, <clears throat> you know, I've got, uh, my camp blanket. And, um, as I said last week, or if you didn't see the, uh, the show last week is that I'm, putting together my camp blanket. So this, this was the, the badge that I was showing you how to sew on last week. I've finished sewing my Gilwell um, Wombat badge on. And um, 
and I uh, asked you if you could to send me in any spare badges that you've got and I'll sew them on and I'll show you the progress of that and so Will from Ninth Brighton has very kindly um, given me one of his badges to sew on so he uh, kindly gave me his uh, Christmas 2019 badge and I've sewn that on so thanks very much Will for sending that in um, and as I said so if you've got any if you've got a spare badge and you'd like to see that on my camp blanket please send it in the uh, the address is again it's on the website scoutstv.com.au and each week I'll, um, I'll put photos of my camp blanket up onto the website and I'll show you each week um, how I'm going in terms of uh, getting those those on. Um, in terms of uh, other work um, I know that Roy, hi Roy from 9th Brighton has, um, has completed all of his work uh, to earn his gardening badge um, so next week I'll be showing you um, showing you what Roy has sent in and I know that Will has um, he's uh, pretty much done everything he needs to do to earn his pets badge and he'll be sending um, he's going to be sending in some photos and some answers to the questions so oh, I don't have it on hand here there it is so it's alright <laughs> In the um, in your Cub Scout book, um, there will be you know for each of the badges all of the things that you need to do. So if you can get your mum and dad um, to take photos of of your progress and what you've been doing, and if you can put together an email just answering any of the questions and send those in into me, um, and then I'll be able to show everyone um, what you've done and be able to post you out your badges so you can sew them onto your um, onto your tops. Um, now what else I'm just thinking that is um, pretty much it so as I said next week um, we are going to do a Mother's Day thing so um, I want you to make sure in your scout box you've got some paper some um, scissors some pens or pencils so you can do some colouring in you won't need to finish what we're doing um, during the show uh, you'll be able to do it afterwards, but I want you to be able to uh, at least get it started um, and uh, and then as I said afterwards, take some photos of it, send it in and um, and hopefully you'll have something really nice to give to your mum on Mother's Day. So that's, it's time's flown. I hope you've enjoyed episode two of Cub Scout TV um, and if you've got any suggestions, send them in. Um, but otherwise, let's get ready to uh, for the end of the night um, closing parade. So. Everyone, if you're not standing up already, stand up. Um, uh, scouts at ease. Scouts alert. Uh, scouts salute. Uh, dismissed. So everyone turns your left and take two paces. And good hunting. And thanks for watching.